Hey there. Welcome to another video. This time we're going to be talking about grammar strategies in review. And we're only going to talk about two type of grammar rules that are common on the SAT writing section. And that would be subject verb agreement. And then uh, the next one will be on fragments slash incomplete sentences. So let's talk about subject verb agreement. Uh, I think that's pretty obvious when you have a disagreement. It's when the subject and verb disagree in number. So the subject might be plural, whereas the verb might be uh, singular or vice versa. Uh, so the important thing is find the verb, find the, new and do, find the noun doing that verb, meaning the noun that goes with the verb, take out any phrases in between the subject and the verb, and then read the two together and see if they agree. Uh, to kind of take this another step further, um, look for prepositions. Prepositional words like of, out, in, on, off, about, with, to, etc. Because usually the subject comes before the preposition. Okay? Usually the subject comes before the preposition. So let's look at number one. The region, one of the largest of all the Canadian provinces, are inhabited by many wild species of animals. So they do mention provinces, but the things that you see the preposition of, and you see they're talking about a region, and even use the word one as well, so R would not be okay. Because that's singular, so this has to be singular. So we got to say is. Um, so that's how we would fix it. So obviously there's a disagreement here. They disagree, and it has to be is. Uh, let's look at another one. Christopher Columbus, probably the most famous explorer known to Americans, uh, was actually from Genoa, Italy. So, again, we do mention to take out any phrases in between. So that's one thing you could do. So this is just a description about Christopher Columbus. But what we really care about is the subject and the verb. And here, they're okay. Because Christopher Columbus is singular. <coughs> And was is also singular. So here we have an agreement. So this is all good. Number three is kind of interesting. The development of baseball stadiums have increased tenfold over the past 50 years. So what you might want to do is uh, pause the video. Ask yourself, what do you think is happening here? If there is a mistake, how would you fix it? Um, once you feel you know what it should be, play the video and see if you're right. So if you think about it, development of baseball stadiums, you see the preposition of. Subject tends to come before the preposition. So the, the subject is development, not the baseball stadiums. And here you have the word have. That's singular. You didn't say developments. You said development. Singular. So this has to be has not have. Have is plural, has is singular. So we need to say has. If you said baseball stadiums have increased, sure, but we're talking about development. This is a tough one. Shaq, along with his teammates, have entered the building to allow some innovation by all the fans in attendance. Um, so, a bit tricky, but along is still a preposition. You don't use the word and. If the Shaq and his teammates have been a different story. But this is still singular. So if you had Shaq and dot dot dot, then that whole thing would be plural. But if you use the word along, that's a preposition. It's just Shaq. So this has to be has. And then finally, see the preposition in? We're talking about the language, not the poems. Dunkley Lang's Lucille Clifton's poems often make 
Should it be make or makes? Remember, language is singular, not saying languages, saying language. But that's plural. You could say the poems make the reader feel, but we're not talking about the poems and subject, we're talking about the language. So you gotta say makes. So there are a few problems they should try for practice here, one through four. Um, what I recommend you do is uh, pause the video, work these out. Um, either you could, you know, work on your binder. Actually, yeah, work on your binder because you have it there, and see if you get the same answers I do. So definitely pause the video, and then I'm going to go over these right now. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and work this out. Uh, if we look at this one, you're talking about the Brooklyn Bridge. And you see the preposition, only one of, so it's English, it should be is. And uh, so A and B are out, as well as E. Uh, C is a bit awkward, so I'll go D on that one, is the most well-known. Um, so you go through process elimination when you approach these kind of questions. These are the improving sentence questions, where A is uh, always the original. And they'll usually give you about two or three options that will fix a mistake, but then only one of them is going to work because the other ones um, might have something else wrong with it, like C fixes the subject verb disagreement, but then it just sounds awkward. Um, D sounds more clear. Number two, now we have the word and, so it is plural. So in this case, it should be just lead, not leads. These are called identifying error questions because you want to identify the mistake and clear there's a mistake with A. Everything else is all good. So here's mob. So even though you do see the word and, the subject is still mob. It's a group. The group has assembled, not have assembled. Um, and again, we did see a preposition back in number two of, but we were talking about two things, elegant posture and display of foot stance. But here we see of and just one uh, subject mob, right for Here you see two subject listening, that's singular. Not enhance, but enhance is. So A is out. Uh, C is out because again we have singular. Um, if you look at B, D, and E, uh, I like B. D sounds a bit awkward. Um, I would probably go with B because it has the right parallel structure. That's what we'll talk about later. But enhances children's understanding of and appreciation for. So there's, uh, children have two things, the children understanding of and appreciation for. So things are structured the same way. So we go with B instead of um, D or E. And plus D kind of changes the meaning anyway. Okay, let's talk about fragments and incomplete sentences. Uh, one thing I need to talk about are independent and dependent clauses. An independent clause is a sentence that can stand on its own. A dependent clause is basically a statement that can't stand on its own as a sentence. So that's what we're talking about here. When you have incomplete sentences, you're going to have dependent clauses, like running away for the lives. 
that can't stand on its own. Um, you probably would need to say, this person was running away for his life, sure. Or these people were running away for their, life, for their lives, sure. Michael, the best basketball player in the world, that can't stand on its own. You can say, Michael, the best basketball, play, best basketball player in the world, won six NBA championships, or something like that. So, sometimes we need something to uh, complete it. So it could be missing a crucial piece, like a subject or a verb. Sometimes it can be difficult to spot. That's because they might use some of these words here, like after, although, something like that. So if we look at, like, um, here, Adam studied ground concepts all night. Cool. After Adam studied ground concepts all night, and it's almost like you're waiting for that person to finish his or her statement. So the word after makes the sentence a dependent clause, which is not okay. You would need to say something else then, <coughs> or drop the word after. So you need to watch out for that. So, so let's do some isolated practice, then some practice SAT problems. Um, identify if the sentence is, it is complete or incomplete, and be prepared to explain your reasoning. Okay. Toys of all kinds thrown everywhere. Okay. So it's incomplete. Are thrown everywhere. And because we see the, the preposition of and toys, we got to use a plural verb. A record of comps began when you were first hired. Uh, that would be fine. Because here you have your subject. Sorry, your uh, verb. Here you have your subject. You know, everything's fine. That would be complete. With the ultimate effect of advertising to sell the product, the word with, if you look back up here, with those words, like uh, after all though, because, now that sense, uh, though, until, when, while, um, probably with is no one should have added here as well. Um, you know, some of those transition words can cause fragments. So, just say the ultimate effect of advertising is to sell the product. So now it's the deep, uh, independent clause that can stand on its own by dropping the word with. By paying too much attention to polls, can make politically unwilling to propose innovative policies, I would drop the word by. Paying too much attention to polls can make. So, <coughs> sometimes prepositions also can cause that. Um, so we want to drop the word by. Doing freelance work for a competitor got Phil fired. Um, that's actually okay. So say that's complete. So again, I would uh, pause the video and try these four problems, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so if we pause and do these four, if you look at number one, um, most saxophones, except for the straight body Sopranian and Sopra models, with an upturned lower end and attached to crooked neck at the upper end. So the word with is causing it to be a fragment. You can say have, because we need a verb there. Most saxophones have an upturned, so C would be the problem. And those that for the identifying error questions, even though you're not asked to fix it, I like to fix them anyway, just so it gives me more confidence in my answer. And also, I'm able to recognize that, oh, this is a subject-verb disagreement, so I feel more confident in my answer. Uh, even though we expect these to be subject-verb disagreement, sorry, um, we expect these to be incomplete sentences, uh, so I meant to say earlier, um, because it's in the category for incomplete sentences. But hopefully you get to the point where when you see a whole bunch of different types of questions, you'll be able to identify what type of grammar rule is uh, being tested here. Uh, so the next one, more than 10,000 earthen mounds built by prehistoric Indians for similar purposes. They have found in Minnesota. Have been found in Minnesota. That would make it sound um, like a complete sentence. Uh, 
Um, three, females not allowed to compete in or even watch the games of ancient Greece. Um, probably need a verb. So I think D would work because you're talking about females, so it should be plural. Females were not allowed to compete in or even watch. And then four. Probably drop the word who. So that'd be D again. So now we have a bit of review. There are four problems that are a mixture of both sort of verbs and fragments. Uh, what I prefer you do is uh, do these uh, as part of your homework, and then we'll talk about these in class as like a uh, discussion. So I'm not going to actually do this here in this video. Um, plus, I need to start getting ready for our class coming up soon. Um, but yeah, just do these four. We'll talk about it as a class. Okay, and that is it.